Hi, in this series of videos, we're going to be looking at repeated percentage change. They are a little bit challenging. You do need to take the time to stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. If you're not sure about anything, please always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this playlist, we're going to be looking at repeated percentage change. Now, these questions are a little bit more challenging. They're aimed at roughly about grade six on a GCSE question. You will need a calculator for them. Um, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. If you're not sure, always add a comment and I'll come back to you. Okay, so there is a 20% reduction from normal prices in the shop sale. On Saturday, the manager decides to offer a further, and this is the key issue here, a further 10%. So actually prices have not been reduced by 30% overall. Now the reason that is, um, I'm just going to write in here, no. So you've got 20% reduction, okay, and then a further 10%. Now, the reason that they've not been reduced by 20% overall is because effectively this further 10% is 10% of the already reduced prices. So the prices now at this point are 0.8, okay? They are 80% of the prices that they were right at the very beginning. So 20% reduction is an 80% of the actual price. As a decimal, that's 0.8. And then a further 10% means that we're gonna multiply those prices by 0.9. Now that's gonna give you 0.72. So effectively, the prices have been reduced by 0.8. To eight, okay, because the prices as they are are seventy two percent. Remember, this is the decimal equivalent. They are seventy two percent of what they were originally. So the actual reduction is twenty eight percent. So therefore, prices reduced by twenty eight. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. If you're not sure about this, it is quite tricky. So please do add a comment and I'll try to help you. Okay, let's move on then to question number two. And again, I would please ask you to stop the video, have a go at this particular question. Now I'm going to use a formula on this, which is the compound interest formula, which um, there's quite a few uh, videos on the channel about this particular type of question, maybe not at this sort of level. Okay, so we we're saying Florence invests three and a half thousand for three years in a savings account. She gets two percent for the first year, then X percent compound interest for two years after that. Okay, so at the end of three years, she's got that amount of money. Well, let's look at what happens at the end of the first year. So I'm going to put first year. Okay, well, that's going to be equal to the original multiplied by the multiplier to the power of n. And that's the formula that I would tend to uh, use in these sorts of questions. So the original is going to be 3,500 and the multiplier is 2%. Well, it's actually 102% because effectively what we've got is Florence has given 100% of her money to the bank and then she gets 2% on top of that. Now, the decimal equivalent of that is 1.02, which is actually the multiplier. And in this particular case, it's n is the power of 1, which is one year. So in other words, at the end of the first year, she's got £3,570. OK, now I'm going to apply the same formula because effectively I can say, well, at the end of the, uh, the next two years, she's now got £3,677.90. And that's made up of the original amount, 3570 multiplied by the multiply, which is the bit that we're being asked to work out, to the value of 
two because it's two years okay so all we need to do really is use this and manipulate it to try to figure out how we can actually get to the value of the multiplier well what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide both sides by 3570 so what i end up with is 3677.90 divided by 3570 and that equals the multiplier squared. Okay, well, I'm not really interested in the multiplier squared. What I want is the actual multiplier. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to square root it. Okay, now when I put that into a calculator, it's going to give me the actual value of the multiplier, which in this particular case is going to be equal to 1.014999 recurring, I think, and that's the multiplier. OK, now you remember from right at the very beginning, this is effectively the decimal equivalent. So if I multiply this by 100, I get 101.49 recurring percent. OK, so it's the same as saying 101.49 recurring percent. OK, so the actual multiply, and again, if you remember from the very top here, the actual value of X is going to be 1.49% recurring. Well, I'm actually going to say that's the same as saying 1.5%, and that's to one decimal place. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. Uh, let's move on to question number three, which is actually quite similar. Once you get used to doing these sorts of questions, if they do crop up, you would kind of follow a very similar plan, a very similar way of doing it. So let's have a look then at question number three. So question number three, we've got Joseph and he's putting some money into a savings account. Um, this particular one, um, oh, it's actually, there's a mistake there. Um, Joseph invests that for five years in a savings account. I'm so sorry, five years in a savings account. It gets 3% per annum compound interest for the first year, then X percent compound interest for the next four years. OK, so let's have a look at the end of five years. He's got that amount of money. So let's again do exactly the same. Look at the first year. So after the first year, we've got uh, original times multiplier to the value of n. OK, well, the original was 2,600. The multiplier was 103%. OK, in the first year, so that's going to be 1.03 and it's one year. So at the end of the first year, he's got £2,678. OK, right, so we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the previous questions. We're actually going to use the same formula and say now we've got 2956.01 and that equals the original 2678 multiplied by the multiplier. Now, in this particular case, now it's a further four years, so it's a value of four. OK, so you know what's going to happen now is that I need to divide both sides by 2678. So I'm going to get 2956.01, all divided by 2678, and that equals the multiplier to the value of four. OK. No, I don't want to the value of four. I want the actual value itself. So I'm going to do the fourth root. So for these, you will need a scientific calculator. If you're not sure how to get to the fourth root, if you look on your calculator, there is a key. I'll just try and bring this into shot here. There is a key here on my calculator, which will allow me to calculate these things. It's this one here. OK, so uh, with your calculator, it might be slightly different, but essentially with a scientific calculator, there should be a way of doing it. So when I feed that into the calculator, I'm going to get, um, it's unfortunately I'm running out of space a little bit, I'm going to get 1.024999. OK, now remember that that is the decimal equivalent. OK, so I'm just going to round that to um, 102.5%. So therefore, the value of x, x equals 2.5% compound for the four years. OK, uh, hopefully that's been OK for you. It's very similar to question number 
to, um, please do always go back on these videos if you need to, or also have a look on the rest of the channel and there are other videos with very similar sorts of questions on them. Okay, I think what we'll do, this is 10 minutes into the video, so we're actually going to leave it here. Um, and then I think for the next video, we'll start from question number four onwards. I hope it's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below. If you're not sure about anything. Uh, subscribe to the uh, channel, uh, like the video. It's always good for the YouTube algorithm and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.